Uh, Obao o hola e kukuro i naba he kupa no kona, o kaloko ka aina, o kaloko ka vai, o hualala e kikua hivi, o ke hao kamakani. Uh, e yano vao. Um, good morning everyone, my name is hola e kukuro i naba. Kaloko is my land, kaloko is my water, kaloko is my ocean, hualala is my mountain, and ke hao is my breeze. Uh, this is where I call home my entire life. Um, and before we get started in in some of the legislative type activities, I just wanted to share a little bit about my background. Um, as a Hawaiian, we always identify our family um, and those who came before. So on my father's side, uh, my father is pure Japanese. Uh, his grandparents came here from Hiroshima and Fukuoka, Japan in the late 1890s. Um, and started off in Hamakua as non-contract plantation workers, making their way over eventually, however, to Kona. Um, and my grandfather was one of the first people to plant the Guatemalan version of coffee um, that really took off here in North Kona at Waiaha, right near Holualoa. Um, in that time, he was also able to start a taxi business. Uh, they saw some of the first vehicles coming into Kona in the early 1900s. Uh, they eventually built the Kona Hotel, the small pink hotel up there in Holualoa, which our family owned and operated uh, until 2021. So on that side, you know, very Kona-centric for the last four generations. My mother's family, um, she's born in Hilo, adopted and raised uh, across the island, starting in Olomana, Oahu, moving to Kihei, and then graduating here from Konawaina High School uh, in the early 80s. So for me, this island as a whole is home, but um, for my life, I call it Kona, my home. Uh, I'm the second of three children. I have an older sister and younger brother. Uh, we all still reside in Koloko here in Kona with my brother being uh, a college student right now on Oahu. Uh, and as Chuck was sharing, kind of my educational background, uh, I was fortunate that my parents put me in uh, Punana Leo, the Hawaiian Immersion Free School, and that's where uh, me and my family and a lot of our friends got to learn the Hawaiian language growing up, uh, eventually graduating from Kamehameha and doing a five-year stint in California, um, down in Orange County. And in 20. 19, sorry, 2017, I was able to move back home here, not necessarily sure what I was going to do. So I worked part time in our schools as a part time teacher, a substitute teacher, and then for my mom's uh, business doing back end computer work for those first couple years until I started um, going back to school again in 2019. And it was then, I believe in 20, early 2020, that this kind of council life became to emerge for me. Um, I never thought I would be serving in office, actually, and always wanting to give credit to my predecessors as well on the council, council member Karen Eoff, um, council member Angel Pilago before her. And these are people that I grew up with at the beach here in Kona that um, set kind of that, that track or that trail for me. And it was actually one day funny story, we're flying home from Honolulu, and it was just about this time, because uh, I'm going to Honolulu tomorrow for the same event, that one of our family members had asked us, or family friends asked us, hey, do you think uh, you'd want to run for Karen Eoff's seat? She's turning out. And actually, she asked my mom, she said, no. And they said, well, Leka, what about you? And I said, oh, I don't know, I'll think about it. And in a couple of weeks, kind of felt it out with family and friends, and decided to go for it. And it's been a wonderful journey being able to serve community, the community that raised me to be responsive, um, to try and provide information to our constituents that are that I know is true, um, that I can be their voice here on the council, one of nine voices. So just wanna mahalo you all and kind of share that background with you so you know my upbringing and how I came to be here on the council, not necessarily the, the traditional route of political science or anything like that. Um, but 
going back in the last, so I'm in my second term right now. We get two, we get four two year terms if you're reelected. So you have up to eight years here on the council. And as a council member for us, not only are we responsible for uh, creating and voting on legislation here at the county level, but also for tracking legislation at the state level um, while the state legislature is in session, providing testimony on behalf of our communities, working with our state level legislators, some of whom I was with this, this week in Japan. Um, and sometimes even for us here on the council, what's happening in Honolulu at the legislature seems a little disconnected. Um, but that's one of our joys is to try and make that connection with community here and what's going on in Honolulu. Um, in addition to what I currently do on the council, I still do educational contracting for Laiopua 2020, a nonprofit here in Kona. Still make it to the schools one or two days a month to substitute at our um, Hawaiian language immersion school here in Kona and at um, Kamehameha Preschool, kind of to keep me going and reminded as to the things or why I do the things I do here on the council. So that's been a blessing that I've been able to continue that work that I started when I first moved home in 2017. And excuse me, I'm a little under the weather, so you're going to give it my best. Um, things that were, you know, a little difficult over the last two and a half years on the council, um, but they were accomplishments. One of um, one bill that council member Vegas and I worked on was a non-mineral sunscreen ban. Um, this is a bill that was introduced and passed in Maui County. At the state level, um, there was a bill that was passed that banned just two um, ingredients that were known to be harmful to our reefs. In working with Maui County um, and in kind of following their lead, Council Member Villegas and I were able to put together a bill that um, rather than saying what we can't have, we're saying what we could have. And those are um, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, the two ingredients that are known to be safe and effective, um, not just for us, but for the reef as well. So that's something that was uh, kind of a, a big accomplishment in light of some of the opposition that we got for that bill. Um, just recently, the county passed some ordinances regarding real property tax. So for me, um, it was the bill to ensure that our ag farmers uh, receive the homeowner class, which is the lowest property tax class the county has. It also comes with a 3% assessment cap. So from year to year, um, I'm sure many of us know that the assessed values of properties in the county, especially during and after COVID, um, saw some significant heights. So providing those protections for farmers because some of them in the way our tax code was written, wouldn't they would have to choose either pay the ag rate and get some exemptions off the assessed value or jump over to the homeowner class. So we're providing them for the one property that they do live on, the homeowner rate plus keeping the exemptions that they already had. Um, and it's not necessarily something that everybody was able to participate in, but definitely something that a lot of our old time local Kona coffee farmers, our math nut farmers, those who live on their own property and small um, farm their small properties were able to benefit from. Um, as some of you may know, uh, we experienced a scandal with affordable housing credits over the last couple of years that came out you know, came to light. Uh, we here at the county have a affordable housing policy that sets the number of credits that are required to be earned by developers if they're building market rate housing and how many of those units are approximately um, what percentage of the overall development needs to be affordable. Uh, for, for that, uh, we, you know, it was a federal case and it, it's still ongoing to some degree. Um, but making sure that moving forward, the council gets quarterly reports from the Office of Housing and Community Development, because for as long as Chapter 11, where this code lives, has been in existence, we've not had any type of public reporting of the affordable housing credits. And these are credits that 
one developer could transfer to another um, at whatever the market going rate is. Um, and you know the second party could then turn in those credits instead of building their affordable housing. So we saw a lot of problems um, and it, it took a county audit by the auditor that we'll have to circle back on in a couple of years to see how the Office of Housing and Community Development was able to or is not able to implement some of the recommendations that were provided. Um, but that was something that my office really took the lead on because we know that housing is is a problem here in our county, not just in our county, but in our state. But when we know within our own county, our systems of accounting are, are not accurate or we're not representative of of what has been occurring over the last few decades, we needed to do something. <clears throat> uh, in addition, we've had some some fun bills with the planning department. Um, as you know, we have land use designations here, um, zonings, whether it be ag or residential, and the county council is responsible for granting change of zone um, for applicants that come before the council. And oftentimes we were seeing folks come in, uh, get five years to do what they need to do to change from ag to residential, uh, but built in within these ordinances was a provision that allowed the planning department to grant administrative extensions outside the purview of the public. Um, so we did, we were able to pass a bill just by the hair of our chin chin chins to ensure that that type of language that grants administrative extensions cannot be included in rezoning um, rezoning ordinances anymore and that the council has oversight to ensure that we are, you know, if somebody represents that they're going to complete their change of zone in five years, they'll complete it in five years. And if they don't, it can come to us via resolution and the council can grant an extension of five years. But just trying to be very clear as to um, what powers and authorities the administration should have and what powers and authorities the council should have in keeping things nice and clean and orderly, especially when it comes to land use. Uh, and there's a couple other things uh, for those of us who frequent the beach. Uh, just in this last fiscal year, we were able to get funding for a new lifeguard stand as well as uh, lifeguards at the Kohanaiki Beach Park. Uh, last year, we lost a 15-year-old girl out in the surf lineup, and her mom worked to advocate with the council, um, especially my district, being that that's where Kohanaiki is located, as well as the mayor and fire administrations to make sure that we can get a lifeguard stand there that is staffed and paid for by the county. So we're really thankful and grateful that we'll be having that extra level of protection at a beach park that is so heavily used by the county. Um, and even those who come to visit and camp from the east side as well. Before I jump into things that are kind of coming down the pipeline or things that um, might be of interest moving forward, I'd like to you know see if anybody has questions on anything I've shared thus far. I know kind of gives you a little insight as to the the random nature of some of the the conversations and topics that we that we touch here on the council. But I would love to open it up to anyone here or anybody in Zoom land. Who has any questions? Um, I'm going to um, start by saying um, that question really pertains to parks and recs. Yes. Um, and I know that you had said prior to this that the parks and recs committee was disbanded on the council, um, but there are significant problems within that system. Um, the mayor has been notified. The um, head of Parks and Rats, Maurice Messina, has been notified of these problems. Um, and for instance, my home swim pool is the Pahala pool. Um, the Pahala pool was um, mismanaged and they had pump failure um, that they shouldn't have had. And then they closed the pool to repair the pump, quote unquote. This was about 
two and a half or three years ago. Um, the pool never reopened. And under the pretext that they were doing an upgrade to the pool, right? So the upgrade involved the ADA requirements that I guess were mandated by the federal lawsuit, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the bottom line is the pool is still not open. Um, we don't have an opening date. The work has not yet been done. And if you've ever been to Pohala, you've been to Pohala, there is nothing for those children to do during the summer. Um, you know, there's no opportunities for them. They're completely at loose. You know, it used to be when you went swimming in the summer, there were swimming classes and lessons and aerobics and all sorts of things, you know. Um, and it's really just been painful to drive to Konawina, which I have to do now to even be able to swim. Um, there are maintenance issues at Konawina that have been reported. They are still not being attended to. Um, the biggest one is the solar heater um, system to heat the pool, which is important in Konawina. I don't know if you guys know weather there, but it's sunny in the morning. And then immediately it starts clowning over like clockwork about one o'clock. And then it gets cool at night. So your pool sinks to, you know, 77 degrees, maybe 78 if you're lucky. You know, on a good day, it's been 80 this summer. Um, we'll give the council member a chance to respond to your statement. Okay. okay. I, I just have one other portion to this, okay. and it concerns lifeguards. Um, that cone pool, um, I know at least one person who is highly qualified, won national swimming championships, and they won't hire this person. And that's also been brought to the attention of everybody. So, so those are my pool questions, and I have a whole other set of I did spend a few degrees. I live on the Hillside side and I swim at uh, the Sparky, our local pool. And things are pretty dismal there. It's one of the largest and most active pool on the entire island, I believe. Right? There hasn't been hot water in the shower for years. And that pool is cold, let me tell you. Um, some kids have dropped out of swim team practice because they are too cold. To do swim team. That's how cold it is. Um, I personally found that it's very cold. I'm not going to go into this. The women, the locker room, Helen can attest to the way the, the locker room is. The women's locker room. Big holes in the wall. I'm missing the sink that's been ripped off. It's, it's unbelievable. The only reason it's closed on Sunday, the only reason it's open on Saturday is because the senior center has classes there and they pay the lifeguard. So if it wasn't for the senior center paying the lifeguard, how long the pool would be closed all weekend, which would be time for people to want to use it. And there's also a frequent closing, unexpected closing because of staff shortage. So the, there's a big pool problem on the island. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, I totally understand. Um... For Pahala, well, and let me preface what I'm saying here is an understanding. I want to make clear that as council members, we can come to advocate with the administration on behalf of our constituents. The departments fall under the mayor's purview. Um, you know, in my working with Parks and Recreation, they've been, they have tried to be as helpful as possible. I swim at the Kailua pool here as well as at the Konawina pool on some days. These, some of these smaller um, kind of issues when it comes to pumps or staffing, they're trying to address when it comes to things that like, in my district, let's say there's small things that need to be fixed at the park. My, my constituents are reaching out to me and we do have small pockets of funds that we are able to give as council members to the departments um, to help, you know, if they didn't budget for some of the mechanical or maintenance issues that pop up throughout the fiscal year. But I would recommend working directly with your council member um, 
We typically stay out of other council members' lanes and that's to ensure that communication and follow through when it comes to any problems uh, does work in the best way possible. So for Hilo folks, either council member Kagi Water, council member Leloy out in Pahala, um, and actually Ponawina as well, that's council member Galimba. Um, but I will say prior to Director Messina coming in earlier, you know, two and a half years ago, there was no inventory of parks and recreation facilities across this island. So I, that'll kind of give you insight as to why some of the conditions of the facilities across our island have gone into such disrepair uh, because they couldn't tell you, hey, this is the TMK. At this park, there are three toilets, two sinks. There was nothing like that. And for the first time, the county does actually have an inventory for parks and recreation. And I'm not calling just that department out, but that's the case also with some of our other departments, like the fire department, like the police department. Um, there's in Hilo, as some of you may know, uh, Central Station in downtown, you know, blocks of the building had been falling side, almost hitting some of our firefighters. But it goes to show that um, there's been mismanagement or it's almost been a problem that everybody's just kicking the can down the road. Uh, right now, we're kind of really seeing it come to things. So just wanted to share that insight with you folks and um, the current leaders of the departments are trying better, um, even for parks and recreation, asking for more money in the budget, which the council did grant for some of the maintenance and repairs. Obviously not enough to get it done in a timely manner um, or you know instantly, but for parks and recreation and for our first responders, I would say the council is definitely supportive. And I, I speak for my colleagues on that on making sure that the health and safety um, on the first responder side and then the enjoyment, the recreation component of our constituents are addressed. 